Well, it's so good to be with you today, and thank you, Harley. Wow, has our world changed in the last few months? Uh, I can remember we were here last summer, and we were asking you to pray for us. We were getting ready for our first, well, we hoped that it was our first annual cousin camp with all the kids coming together, the 16 grandkids, well, 15 then. And so that was pretty awesome what happened there. But then on October 7th, you're right, everything changed. And sadly, six of the Holocaust survivors that we work with were killed on October 7th. And so think about that. They survived Nazi Germany. They made it to Israel. This is where they dreamed of being their whole life. And then they get killed by a terrorist group. And so we just want to take you through kind of what um, what God is doing now, kind of set the scenes. Maybe you'll understand things better. Um, but um, we're, we're, we're looking at King David's words today, um, uh, Psalm 145 in the in the worship hour. But right now, Psalm 27, and you probably know the beginning of this verse. Uh, this passage, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So that's kind of where my memory work stopped on those verses. But if you go on, it is as current as if it was was, uh, mailed from heaven on October 7th. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war breaks out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. And so October 7th snuck up really on everyone, uh, especially Israel. It was the most polarized the nation had been since 1948. There were massive protests happening. Do you remember all the sides waving flags? Now, everybody in Israel serves, so so right, left, middle, they're all waving Israeli flags. They're not burning flags, they're waving them. And the country was deeply, deeply polarized. October 7th, happen, and a miracle happened in Israel. They came together that day. Here's Israel, the West Bank, which is Samaria and Judea, renamed the West Bank by Jordan. There's Gaza way down uh, southwest, and that is six miles wide, about 25 miles long. And this took the focus of the world. Okay, next one. You really probably can't even see where Israel is in the midst of the, the Arab world, the Muslim world. A little red speck of land right there, the green, is all Islam and controls that region. So this is what happened on that day. Uh, It was carefully orchestrated, and uh, we've been in Gaza. We've actually probably been there, Joanne and I, about 15 times doing ministry, working in refugee camps. We've seen Muslims come to faith in Christ. There's a Christian presence in Gaza, believe it or not. But... um, Uh, We've been in Gaza when one Hamas terrorist escaped over the fence, just just one, and it was a big deal. And Israel either arrested him or if they were wired with explosives, they shot them. We remember being there and and then hearing on October 7th that maybe 500 got across, and then all of a sudden it was 1,000. Now we know it was, what, 2,000? Now that broke into Israel was absolutely shocking. So they really came out uh, in this area up where you see Nahal Oz came through that fence. They also went through the Eris Crossing, which is uh, really heavily fortified. But Israel had a lapse in security. We'll talk a little bit more about that next hour, but it happened. And all of a sudden, kibbutzim and cities were under an onslaught. A, a Jewish pastor, a Jewish believer pastor in Sterot, had heard nothing about what's going on, and his wife heard a disturbance in the street below them. They live in an apartment, and she just picked up her camera and stuck it outside, started filming it. She didn't realize that they were Hamas, that Hamas was already in the city and they were already starting to kill people. 
So this is where a lot of the activity was uh, around Gaza. You can see, um, see, can you, yeah, Khan Yunus, you'll hear about Khan Yunus. I don't know if you've been following this, but the, the one that was the architect of this, his name is Sinwar, and um, that's where he's from. We've, we've, done, we've done medical clinics in Khan Yunus. It's very sad uh, to see their existence. There are uh, some very innocent Palestinians that don't want anything to do with Hamas. There's some that applaud them and really are standing behind them. So when we got to Israel, this is what we saw, pictures of the hostages all over. In fact, you get off the um, plane and Joanne, you want to come on up and talk about that? In fact, we'll kind of go back and forth here on, on some of this. Tell them about what you saw when, when we got off the plane. Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Even if I'm not on my tippy toe, there we go. Um, yeah, you know, coming into the airport, typically it is just packed with people. So the first thing that I noticed, and Barb and Tom, I know you had a chance to go to Israel as well, and you probably saw the same thing. There was no one in that airport. And when we walked down, there's the, kind of this little ramp that you walk down, and it was picture after picture after picture of each one of those hostages. And you've seen those posters, but they were big, and it has their name and their age, a little bit about them. And to just arrive in Israel to see those faces and to know that's happening right here, right where we were standing, those hostages were not far from, from where we were. So that was heartbreaking. And then no matter where we went in the city, whether it was Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, no matter where we were, there were pictures of all of these hostages. They have not forgotten. Today is day 135 that these hostages have been held in captivity. There's 134 of them that, are, that they know of that are still held captive. Some of them have been killed. In fact, I was just reading, I was telling some of the ladies earlier, um, this was in mid-November, early November, so shortly after the war started, that Sarah Netanyahu, so the prime minister's wife, reached out to Jill Biden, our president's wife, and she said to her, a newborn baby has been born to a woman who's in captivity. Can you help? And Jill Biden never responded. So there's also a now a three-month-old baby born three months ago that's still, if that child's alive, is still held in captivity along with uh, a nine-month-old that's now one years yeah. old, a four-year-old, and of course we know many others. So um, it was just very chilling to be in that place, to know the tragedy that, that took place. Um, and the, the picture of this gal, this is one of our friends. We met her there, Tamar. She was in the IDF and the Special Forces, and she's holding a picture of her fiancé. And on October 7th, he'd been, you know, somewhere in near Gaza. She called and called and called him. He wouldn't answer. She went where he was supposed to be. No one knew where he was. It took them, they went hospital to hospital to hospital over the last, the next three days to only discover that he had been killed in action fighting Hamas that very first day on October 7th. So she's holding. And she's holding that thing. ring too. They oh, shared right. rings. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. And so uh, this is, as we went down south to actually where he lost his life and she went with us, she wanted to go. So heartbreaking to see. So this is mm -hmm. Kifar Aza. So if you've heard of Kifar Aza, it means village of Gaza. It is right up against a wire fence. These are kibbutzniks. Many of them would be kind of, maybe kind of like hippies, you know, give peace a chance and, and that. And they live next to them. They help Palestinians. They took them to doctor appointments. They co-op farm with them. They did all kinds of things. They worked in their homes. They did, you know, home repairs. So, I mean, they had close relationship yeah. with the people in Gaza, knew them by a first name basis, many of them. And then they turned on them yep. that day. And many of them were mm -hmm. receiving phone calls and, oh, yeah, Mahmoud, how are you? And they would say, uh, are, are the IDF there? Have you seen the IDF? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, OK, click. And they were scoping out things. They were calling yeah. some of the Jews in Israel to find out where they could go because they'd made friendships with them. This house was, this was mm -hmm. horrific, what happened uh, here in this house. This is just an example of what we saw when we were there. This is a woman named Chen, and, and going in, we had to wear army helmets and 
bulletproof vests. It was still, Israel was firing into northern Gaza uh, against the terrorists. And you can just see the destruction. I know you've seen a lot of this on TV, but it was so much more personalized mm. when we were there, right? So when we were there, um, when we came up to this kibbutz, first of all, I will say this. We've been to Israel many, many, many times, 100 times maybe. Yeah. This was a different Israel. Yeah. Barb and Tom, you can attest to that. It was a different Israel. You know, oftentimes it's so crowded and there's so many tourists and, you know, people on Bible tours that you almost feel that you're in the way of people's everyday life, mm-hmm. right? This time there was nobody there. And Jewish people with skull caps on, you know, women with their turbans, they were coming up and hugging That's us. Right. What are you doing here? Thank you for coming here during this time. So first of all, it's a different Israel. So then we knew we needed to go down to to where um, all the tragedy happened. We wanted to not just see it. We wanted to pray. We wanted to bring Jesus back into that place. We wanted to try to bring hope to so many of these Jews who do not yet recognize Jesus as Messiah. So we go down to this kibbutz. And when we first get there, I have to tell you, um, you know, this is November, so the fighting is still very strongly going on there. About every 10 seconds, there's just a huge boom. You know, the rockets going off that Israel is sending into Gaza. So as we're talking to Chin, we couldn't help but we're just, you know, flinching. It was so deep. It shook the ground. It was so loud. And we're flinching and flinching. And I felt so bad. I'm thinking, this is her home. We don't want her to think that we don't want to be with her. And she looked at us and she said, don't worry. In about 15 minutes, you won't notice it anymore. You'll stop flinching. And she was right. We sadly got used to that bombing. But this was their home. So we get there, and we start walking through. We get to this area where it's worse. And this is right up against the fence. And Hamas went in. And this is where you hear the stories where they brutally raped. They burned people. They chain them together with wires and you can see how they burn their houses and when we would get close to them some of them had three different colors of spray paint on their door or on the walls outside I can't remember what each one meant. Yellow meant that that's where terrorists were killed. In their the bodies house, were still and in there. Their bodies were still there. Red meant the Israelis were there. That were their killed, bodies were and still their bodies in there. Were there. And then there was um, black that meant there's explosives that need to be disarmed. So by the time we got there, seventy-ish days after, of course, the bodies were taken out, but we could still smell them. There were so many hundreds of people that were killed so, so in this kibbutz. So this is one of them, and here's a poster of the person that was missing in captivity. They put it up on their house. So you see the red marking, you see the yellow, you see the black. There was everything there, explosives. And then you see the posters that meant the person that lived there was captive and still in Gaza. Uh, This is Mm -hmm. some of the... Uh, Red Cross that were, uh, not Red Cross, uh, Magan David uh, Adam. Talk about heroes. Uh, Unbelievable. They they actually made a Star of David out of some of the things that were fired at them as they were holding down the facility there, treating people with terrorists going up and down the street and they're ducking fire. It was unbelievable. This is a a man that is a mayor down in the area and he just decided to set up this massive tent for all the the soldiers coming down and they would barbecue for them. People were flying in from around the world just to serve the soldiers. I I bet there was 500 there Mm -hmm. when we went that night and thanking Americans, thanking Christians for coming. This is an amazing place. Israel's National Emergency Service, Magan David Adam. Ambulances, first aid, they uh, respond to every call in less than a second. They have headphones on. There's uh, thousands of people wired up, ready to go. When a phone rings, they, it's automatically picked up for the open line. And anywhere in Israel, whatever is going on, people are responded to in less than two minutes with an ambulance. It's just so hard to believe that they can do that. Love this. Whoever saves one life, it is as if he saves an entire world. Mm-hmm. We say it uncharted. Every soul matters, right? 
And so we were privileged because we didn't really ask for it, but money started coming in to Uncharted. Some of you uh, gave, and thank you so much. And I mean, a lot came in, and people wanted to help Israel, and they felt bad. And so we were able to buy a fully outfitted ambulance because Hamas destroyed so many ambulances. We saw Franklin Graham, uh, the Samaritan's Purse, bought 17, and I thought, wow, wouldn't that be great if we could do one, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and the money came in, and then money came in for an ambu cycle which is an emergency vehicle that gets through the gridlock traffic this is ellie bin and had a presentation to us but we could not believe the reception that we received as evangelical christians and jesus was never hidden we talked openly about jesus that we love him that it's caused us to love israel we're grafted in and they were accepting it mm -hmm. these are orthodox mm -hmm. jews receiving us and it came down to this Israel's very pragmatic they, uh, they didn't have any any friends anywhere and this is kind of what happened in the day then we were privileged to go and spend time with the soldiers and uh, they asked us to speak we were able to outfit uh, a company in the Beth El area and it was 95 mm -hmm. 96 Correct. of 90, them yep. with helmets because all of them were reservists so that means they served maybe 20 years ago even and they didn't they had like super old helmets they had no bulletproof vests we felt we're supposed to do that so we went and visited uh, with them uh, so they're men and women and this is our son Josh there and, and Tommy, Tommy next yeah. one this is Tommy they got ready they got to march two miles with the troops mm -hmm. they loved it they were ready to sign up after that and this Josh they were carrying someone that would it would be like to carry someone wounded for two miles and this is Tommy with the Israeli flag mm -hmm. and then at the end we're just thankful and we thought we're going to go to dinner and they said the company wants you to come up and speak and i thought okay this is 99 percent orthodox jews there is one jewish believer we know of who translated the rest would consider themselves orthodox jews now that the ultra orthodox don't serve in the military but this is orthodox with the yarmulke on and we just shared, I read Psalm 127, and we just prayed, Lord, give us the words. We're not gonna hide who Jesus That's is. That's right. So we just came out. I said, look, you guys are Orthodox Jews. The majority of, of you are. We are evangelical Christians. We love Jesus. We try to follow him. That's, you've probably heard of Jesus followers, whatever you wanna say. You've been persecuted for 4,000 years. And us as followers of Christ have been persecuted for 2,000 years. But you know, as we look around today, we realize the people that have persecuted you for all these years are now persecuting us. So we need to stick together in these desperate times. And they just yeah. cheered. I, I couldn't believe it. We read scripture. And then Joanne got up and was so overcome with emotion. She couldn't speak. <laughs> and she just said, I am I could be your mother. Yeah, so and young. I, I just want to give every one of you a hug. That, I just, I want to give every one of you a hug. And Thank pray you for serving. Over you. Pray yeah. for you. And yeah. I want to give every one of you a hug. And I mean, we finished and they're soldiers. They lined up. <laughs> they, they, they got in the hugging formation. It was cute. And we went by later. We're going to dinner. Yeah. And you said to this one, did you get a hug? And what I did said, you say? did I get to hug you yet? He goes, I already got two, but I'll take a third. Yeah. <laughs> But honestly, they are so young. Yeah, you look at some of, crazy. there's one of the young men I hugged. They, they literally could be, some of them, even our grandchildren. They are so young, and they are laying their lives on the line for their country. And it was such an honor, truly, to be in their presence. And I will tell you this, all of us as followers of Christ have been praying that that veil over the hearts yes. of the Jews would start coming down, right? We are seeing that veil is slipping down over so many of these hearts. These Jewish men and women are asking asking questions. Who is this Jesus? Why are evangelical Christians the only ones helping us? Why are they doing this for us? 
Could this be Gog and Magog? Yeah, yeah. Could this be Armageddon? Armageddon, there, a New Testament term. There is yes. this Armageddon. Yeah. And, and then they're asking our, our one friend, you know, who's a Messianic Jew and also Mati, another Messianic Jew, tell us about your faith. We want to know more. So keep praying. That veil is starting to come down. People are starting in, in Israel to recognize Jesus, Yeshua is Messiah. And, and the religion is very polarized. There's so many different groups. There's ethnic groups. There's religious groups groups. You have the two largest groups, the Ashkenazic, Eastern European Jews, Sephardic, which was Spanish Jews, but it became, it became bigger. Jews maybe even raised in Muslim countries. You have all these different Ethiopian Jews, and they all are not right with each other. And so here in two different com companies, there's Yanon with this one and Mati with another one, where he, they tell us about how many times Orthodox are sitting around saying, tell us about what you believe. We've never heard it. We've just always heard it was forbidden for us. And I think we've told you this before in yeah. the in the <clears throat> schools, you know, the young Jewish children when they learn uh, when they learn English, the, the T, they can't even write it with the crossbar at the top because it looks like a cross. It's written with the crossbar at the bottom. And so if you ask a, a Jew in Israel, do you know who Yeshua is? They won't know what you're talking about because the rabbis have changed Yeshua, mm -hmm. Jesus, the, they've changed that name, the Messiah, to Yeshu. And Yeshu is an acrostic, and it means this, may his name be blotted out forever. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're taught. So when you hear Yeshua, they, they won't know what you're, oh, are you talking about Yeshu? Oh, yes, we, we have nothing to do with him. But all of a sudden, because of what's happened, and have you guys been amazed at the anti-Semitism? Oh, my goodness. That I couldn't believe the first week I saw at UCLA. We used to like love to go out and hang out at UCLA. Students marching, chanting, Jew, Jew, you, you can't hide. We'll get you with genocide. And I remember seeing that on TV thinking, nobody got hauled in for questioning. Nobody got expelled calling for genocide, it's just, it's just yeah. happening on college campuses and mm. all over. So yeah. anti-Semitism, we've always known about it in the Muslim world. It's just hair trigger switch away from popping up. But now it's all over the world mm -hmm. and nobody's hiding it. Uh, yesterday in Tennessee, there was a group of Nazis marching, big group not marching. This is in US, there's things happening in Houston. It's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So Jews are feeling surrounded, but the miracle mm -hmm. of what happened on October 7th is they put away all division, political strife, and they came together as a nation and they defended themselves. And we praise God that Hamas jumped the gun. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was planned to be coordinated with Hezbollah attacking from the north, uh, the Iranian groups coming in over from Syria, and then Hamas in the south. But they jumped the gun. It could have been Way worse. far worse. Oh, tell about this. Young so man. this young man, you know, all of us shared. Our son shared. Every we were a group of six. Everyone shared something with his company of soldiers. This gentleman came up to Af come, came up to us afterwards. Got his you know skull cap on, and he said to to Tom and I, he said, "You are my new parents." And he said, I want to give you this. And he gave Tom one of these mm -hmm. necklaces, which are, these are for the hostages. It says in Hebrew on the top and then English on the bottom, bring them home now. And he put it on Tom's neck. He said, I want you to wear this. And so we've been wearing these daily mm -hmm. as a prayer. I put it on every day and pray, Jesus, miraculously Same rescue, yeah. you know, those hostages. As you know, two of them last Sunday during the Super Bowl, two of them were rescued miraculously. And so we still have 134 ish souls desperately needing um, to be rescued so we cannot stop praying for them. Prayer is the fine vein that moves the hand of God. Mm -hmm. um, I think E.M. Bounds is the one that that's, that's, right. that's um, given credit to. And so we want to keep praying for those hostages. And the more of us that come together and pray, the more likely we are to see something miraculous happen. Um, but we can't forget. And this young man is fighting and we pray for them. We know many soldiers right. have already lost their lives. And 
who knows if it's some of these young men that we've That's had, right. and women, that we've had the privilege of meeting. That's right. So we are privileged to come to Bayside to a church that teaches the truth. Amen. And you stand with Israel. And please pray for the pastors in America, because many of them are not standing yes. up. They're not saying a word. I talked to one pastor at church that, that uh, we know about. What have you talked about with Israel? And he said, I, d I don't want to get into politics. <clears throat> I said, this is not political. This is a spiritual issue that has fallen in the political arena. But I said, dude, look at your Bible. 78% of it is about Israel. It starts with Israel. It ends with Israel. It's, we're grafted in. We're, you know, Jesus we is have Jewish. to <laughs> speak up against this. Mm -hmm. And here's the problem that we're seeing with pastors. We need to pray for clergy around the country. It's mm -hmm. this. They don't want to be branded. In this cancel culture, you get a name, you get a tag, well, you're Islamophobic or you're homophobic or, or whatever. And they think if you support Israel and love them, you hate the Palestinians and want to bomb them out of existence. And we just say, God's heart is big enough to love them both. Obviously, we want Hamas gone because Israel's miserable, it's horrible, and so are the people there. But you can love Israel, be pro-Israel, mm -hmm. and have a heart for them, too. We're helping them with a church that needs to be rebuilt. So pray for uh, men in, in the pulpit, that mm -hmm. they would yeah. uh, stand up and speak up. This is an unspeakable evil that's happened. And it's not going to end there. We'll talk about that next hour. Crazily enough, okay, so we can end with this. You would think after October 7th that our work, like going to, to um, train churches on how to reach Muslims, which is what we do in cities where there's lots of uh, Muslims, we're privileged to do that even in Europe. You would think, who, who wants to reach out to Muslims now? Aren't they all like Hamas? We have had more churches and more uh, churches in different countries ask, would you please come? This has put a spotlight on the problem. This is one fifth of the globe is Muslim. And so we have this, I found the truth and that QR code works if you want to point your phone at it if you want to, or you can just find it online. But the number of views after October 7th has tripled. Last month, there was 1.5 million people that watched the videos on YouTube, 1.5 million. I can remember when it was like a few hundred a month. So there are Muslims that are hungry, that are seeking the truth, that are wanting a way out. And there are also believers saying, I don't even know how to talk to the person next door that's Muslim. So anyway, it was evil what happened on October 7th. We're going to talk more next hour about what's happening with the Jews. But this is the time God's called us to live in. And so for us as believers, we've got to be salt and light. But please, with your Jewish friends, reach out. Mm -hmm. Tell them you're praying for them. Tell them you stand yes. with Israel. They will so mm -hmm. appreciate it because they are not taking right. it for granted anymore. I mean, even some of the things that's coming out of our country is, is really scary. So uh, we probably have a couple of minutes. Does anybody have any Sunday school? We can do this, right? Do we, anybody have any questions, anything about what we're seeing? We're going to Israel this week, again, with a solidarity tour, small group that's going to bless Israel and, and, um, and do some things with military and Magen David and go down to the place where it happened. But anyway, anybody have any questions? or anything? Who else is uh, ministering? How many groups are the Solidarity Tour? And who else is ministering? Yeah, there's a great group that we work with called Firm Fellowship of Israel Related Ministries. They're doing that. Uh, I don't know if Franklin took a group down oh, or not. I think some of his staff, they did Franklin Graham, but they invested heavily in Israel to help them. And that has not gone unnoticed, That's believe right. me. So right. um, we're, we're willing to do as many as we need to. Maybe we should have a group from Bayside go and bless them. Mm -hmm. We could do it and yeah. stay. We stay in Jerusalem, even in December when we stayed there. You wouldn't even think there was a war going on because it's in the center of the country. We never heard a siren go off, uh, none of that. So uh, Jews are noticing 
at, at our breakfast at the hotel, we had Orthodox asking us, who are you? Where, where are you guys from? And Why are you here? Why are you here? And this one Orthodox family was, well, tell us where you're going. So we told them. And, and he goes, well, we, do you have a wife? I said, yeah, there's my wife over there. And I said, oh, by the way, she took a DNA test. And we found out she's got a little smidgen of Jewish. She's a little Jewish. And he goes, a little Jewish? That's good enough for me. So <laughs> <laughs> that was like an olive branch, you know, there. So anyway, they are receiving Christians. And we are mm -hmm. hearing that yeah. they are saying we've never felt so close to evangelical Christians because of what they've done. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We should be their best That's friends, right. right? Shouldn't we be? We should. Yes, they need Messiah. Of course, we're praying that. But the more we're around them, the more we're convinced that's going to happen. That's so right. I think there's some other groups going. Oh, um, the Teelings. What was the name of the group? You were chosen, not chosen people. Friends, Friends of, of Israel. Israel. And they're right. great, too. Yeah. yeah. So there are some groups going, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. So what's going to happen to all the Palestinians? Mm -hmm. mm, that's a good, that's question. A good question. So, um, so like on day one, when you saw, I think Israel got like two hours of sympathy and then there were marches worldwide and they weren't calling for a two state solution. We need a Palestine and we need Israel. You know what they were saying? Death to the Jews. Yeah. I mean, it was just out on the table. All the Muslim countries were saying that. So that's, that's just dead, a two state solution. Our government, I want to get too political here, is still pushing for that. Uh, Not going to happen. The, mm -hmm. Both groups, Palestinian Authority and the West Bank and Hamas, have said they don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we don't know what's going to happen. It may end up that Israel has a security zone and they have to monitor it. Uh, none of Egypt doesn't want them. Jordan doesn't want them. Lebanon doesn't want them. I remember, the, you know, the, Jordan uh, and, e and Egypt, they both have Palestinians in them. So this is their own people and they don't they even want, want them. them. Yeah. And they're not. And, and actually, the Palestinians want to stay. They, they get paid so much more. The average Palestinian in the West Bank makes $3,500 a month. In Lebanon, they make $122 a month. It's, so they want to stay. They're, they're not climbing the fences to go into Lebanon and Egypt. I mean, they might to get away from Hamas, but, but so it's an unknown. But again, all of the world is putting pressure on Israel to do it this way. Can you imagine that if we were getting, mm -hmm. Tom, how many rockets was it, 14,000? Yeah, that would be uh, 160,000 Canadians would shoot comparatively. Because there's 8 million Jews who were 320 million out of the ground. 40 times more. Plus, it'd be like 16 million. They call it 400,000 reservists. Yeah. That'd be like 16 million Americans between the age of 18 and 40. So, yeah, so what are the chances we'd take three rockets from Canada, you know, and here they're told to stop. And so the political players are coming in. They all have vested interests. There's, it's entangled. It's a mess. It's the Middle East is complicated, but there's a ton of anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. sadly. Mm -hmm. So, And I think question. this is a time for the church, for all of us to stand with Israel. Yeah. We need to use our voices. We need to use our actions and not be silent. You know, this is a time where I think a lot of um, believers are tending to stand back and try to be neutral. We really cannot afford to be neutral. We need to um, stand for our faith and standing with Israel is really standing for our faith. And so we put a Israeli, you know, we have an American flag on the front of our home. We put a an Israeli one. flag out there as well on October 8th. <laughs> and it has been amazing, the conversation that it has sparked in our neighborhood. So we People just have to... come by and thanked us yeah. for doing that. So No one's yeah. thrown eggs at us yet. Yeah, so yeah. Very you had a question, didn't you? You? Yeah. Um, I heard that most of those workers that went over into Israel were coming and going. Many of them were spies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they love working in Israel because they're paid four times as much. But what Hamas did was started to threaten them, and then a lot of them did it willfully, where they started spying on Israel, giving them maps. They have, uh, the IDF found uh, maps that people got in Jerusalem, knowing where things were that... Listening to phone calls, all sorts of things, yeah. Yeah, so they were totally compromised. And as a result, 70,000 people from India are applying for citizenship. Israel has to replace the workforce. 
and because they just don't know if they can trust them again. So again, yeah. it ends up hurting the Pal what Hamas did really hurts the Palestinians. So they don't help their own yeah. people. But yeah, anything else? But don't you know, Jesus is coming back, right? Amen. Don't you just see it? I mean, it's all lining up. Nobody's hiding anti-Semitism. They're bragging about it. It's, it's uh, unbelievable, the signs we're seeing. So we're going to talk about being faithful to the Lord. We're going to talk about uh, the psalm of the year. Every, every year I have a psalm that I try to read over a couple hundred times and study it in depth. So we're going to talk about that next hour. But crazy, evil times, but aren't we thankful that we know one day King Jesus is coming back, and when all of them surround Jerusalem, he's going to come back. It tells us at the end of Revelation, and, and the, the devil himself goes after him. It's, it's not even a contest. He, it, in Scripture, it doesn't even mention, it just as they're coming, it doesn't even mention the conflict, the throne in the pit of hell. It's nothing for King Jesus. So, how thankful we are that we see that coming. Could be in our lifetime, okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for Bayside Church. Thank you for people that have a heart for yes. the Word of God, have a heart for uh, Israel, love Jesus wholeheartedly. And, and Father, we pray that as believers, as we meet Jewish people, that we could bless them. They have few friends. Many of them are afraid to even admit their Jewishness. So we pray as believers that we could stand with them and make an impact on their life. And Father, we pray that this would be the beginning of Jewish people massively turning mm, yes. to faith in Christ and that the veil would come down. We, we hope for that. We long for that. And we thank you that we can have maybe just even a small part in that praying or mm. talking to a Jewish person that uh, you give us that opportunity. So thank you. Uh, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 God bless you.